right. uh, good evening um, to all who have time online to the SLMA Young Members Forum. Uh, I hope you could hear me. Uh, I'm Dr. Padma Gundratna, President, Sri Lanka Medical Association. Uh, we are going to commence our webinar on Let's Talk About Plastics organized by the Sri Lanka SLMA Young Members Forum. Uh, can you hear me, uh, Sankar? Yes, madam. Uh, right. So initially, let me thank uh, the SLMA Young Members Forum for being active, particularly to Dr. Sankar Andani Kumara for organizing this very, I mean, sort of most uh, uh, useful webinar. This is not the first webinar, but then uh, they have been organizing many important webinars. But uh, this, uh, uh, with regard to plastics, the SLMA in this year in 2021, we have been taking and talking um, a lot on plastics, mainly because that uh, with or without our knowledge that we uh, uh, contribute for this uh, environmental hazard of using plastics uh, in our day-to-day life. So we thought that from SLMA, it's very important that we make people aware of the hazards of plastics uh, and that how much of uh, environmental uh, um, uh, uh, hazard do we contribute uh, by, uh, by using the plastics. So we were lucky that we anyway had our uh, council member, uh, Dr. Sajit Edrisinga, who is an expert in the field of plastics and microplastics. So let me initially welcome uh, both the resource persons uh, uh, for let's talk about plastics. Uh, Mr. N. S. Gamage, Deputy Director General, Environmental Management and Assessment Division, Central Environmental Authority, and uh, uh, Dr. Sajit Edrisinga, uh, Lecturer and Clinical Geneticist, uh, Faculty of Medical Sciences, University of Sri Jayadanapura, for this forum uh, organized by the SLMA Young Members. Uh, so I'm thankful to two moderators also, Dr. Kaushi Atanayake and Dr. Niroda Jayavikrama for consenting to moderate this forum. So uh, uh, I'm sure that uh, uh, we are going to have uh, yet another important and a very useful uh, uh, session uh, uh, and a teaching session uh, on this microplastics in this evening. Uh, so uh, let me uh, hand over the forum to uh, uh, two moderators. Uh, to uh, continue with the proceedings. Uh, over to uh, Ka Dr. Kaushi Atanayake and Dr. Niroda Jayavikrana. Thank you very much, Madam President. Uh, uh, good evening, everyone. Thank you very much for joining us today. So as Madam said, uh, yeah, we are talking about plastics today. This is the third webinar uh, on environmental health organized by the SLMA Young Members Forum. Uh, as Madam said, we have Two eminent speakers today, Dr. Sajid Tadir Singha and Enes Gamage. Uh, I would like to invite uh, Dr. Sajid Tadir Singha for the first talk. Uh, he's the lecturer and clinical geneticist uh, he, uh, at the Faculty of Medical Sciences, University of Sri Java, Dinapura, and uh, uh, he's the assistant treasurer of the SLMA. Uh, so, our very own Dr. Sajid Tadir Singha, uh, please, you can uh, start with your uh, topic. Microplastic unseen danger in a scene disaster. Right. Uh, thank you, Niroda. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam President, and all the participants who have joined. Uh, thank you very much uh, for joining with us. So let let me talk uh, about this microplastic unseen danger in the scene disaster. So I'll be basically talk about the health hazards uh, coming. Uh, from the plastics. And after that, uh, Mr. Enes Gamage will be talking about the uh, legal aspect in Sri Lanka. So hope uh, I'm audible and my screen is visible for you all. Yes, we can hear you. Yeah, okay. Right, uh, thank you, madam. Uh, right, so uh, basically, uh, I will uh, move on with the basic uh, concepts uh, of understanding this microplastics uh, from A to Z. So 
Uh, now today we are talking about this micro and the nano scale of the plastic materials in the environment. So what we talk, what do you mean by this nano and the micro? To understand it uh, in an easy manner. So as we know, the previously we had a bigger sims, and now recently we got the micro sims, and now we are getting the nano sims. So eventually the sim has got smaller and smaller. So now we will also be talking about the unseen side of this, whatever the plastic that we are putting into the environment. So today we will be talking about this unseen or the microscopic level uh, of the plastic. That means from uh, 10 to the power minus six to 10 to the power minus nine. So these days we are mainly worried about this coronavirus. So it is somewhere around one micrometer. So there are plastic materials which are less than this one micrometer, which will eventually go for this nanoscale also. So uh, this is the area that, uh, that we are very worried about because we are not, uh, we cannot see them uh, from our naked eye. Because I'm talking about this plastic material because these plastic materials are less than our, the diameter of our red cell, which is usually around five micrometers. So what is microplastic? So any plastic material that are thrown away uh, to the environment and broken down to less than five millimeters, right? So as you all can see, the, these are the seen small particles of the plastics. But now these plastic particles, now we can collect uh, at least by hand by putting all the Sri Lankans uh, into the uh, ground and we can ask them to collect plastic materials. But the problem comes with the tiny particles, which are, they are in your toothpaste. Again, those are very tiny particles, which are not uh, actually collectible, as well as there are plastic particles in your face wash. And also there are plastic microfibers coming out of your synthetic clothes. Those are the problematic uh, plastic materials that are, uh, that can cause a lot of damage uh, to humans. So uh, in classification, uh, for the understanding purposes, we classify this microplastics into two categories. One is primary, the other one is the secondary. So the primary means from the factory itself, they produce plastic materials less than five uh, millimeter in diameter. Okay, so these plastic materials are incorporated in toothpaste and even in the, uh, the shower gels or the face scrubs. So these particles, the plastic material, including the, in the toothpaste are available in Sri Lankan uh, market as well. It is uh, freely available. And face wash also, those uh, tiny plastic materials are already incorporated in these face scrubs. Their argument is these uh, plastic beads will help to clean your face or remove the small, uh, the dead skin very easily and remove uh, whatever the dirt uh, on your teeth uh, very easily. So that is their argument, that is their uh, the main purpose behind putting these plastic beads into these products. Right? So now again, these are the microscopic fibers that are coming out from your synthetic clothes. So you all must have seen uh, after a uh, wash in the washing machine, there are tiny, tiny fibers are left on this uh, wall of the in, um, inside of that container. So these are the micro fibers, which will also release into the environment. So those are what you call the primary microplastics. The secondary microplastic means the whatever the plastic materials that we are throwing away into the environment and those are crushed or burned or exposed to the sunlight, exposed to the UV radiation, exposed to the rain, those are broken down into small, small pieces. So those are secondary microplastics. So uh, in 2018, by the Royal Statistical Society, they have produced when we collect all the plastic waste throughout the world, only less than 10% has been subjected for recycling. That means more than 90% has been either dumped as a landfilling or either burned 
away. So this burning will also create microplastics and also release various hazardous uh, toxic chemicals uh, to the uh, environment. So why these microplastics are important? So uh, basically I will show a lot of pictures in my presentation that then it is easy for you all to understand. So these are microscopic animals living in the uh, natural um, uh, water pathways, right? So now whatever the plastic material that are released into the environment, either by toothpaste or by the face scrubs or by as the secondary microplastics. So eventually those will be going into the drains and the drains will go into the river and the rivers will ultimately come into the sea. Right? So these luminous green color particles are the plastic materials. So these animals think when these tiny uh, particles are there in the environment, they think they, they are part of their food. So they try to ingest it. So now, as you can see in this animal, right? So the entire GI tract of this animal, that means the intestine of this animal is totally covered by the plastic. And this particular organism also, these are stuck inside their intestinal tract. So now this is the main step, right? This is the main step uh, which will try, uh, in, try these microplastics that will enter into our human body, right? So these tiny uh, animals will see these 100 micrometer diameter plastic materials, right, uh, as part of their food. So what will happen during our O levels also, we have learned, right, a food chain. So these tiny particles or the animals will start eating these tiny, tiny plastic beads. So uh, a bigger fish will eat at least 100 or 150 uh, type of this, uh, tiny uh, animals. So uh, eventually there will be a bioaccumulation because a bigger, even a bigger fish try to eat 10 or 15 of this type, number two type of fish. So eventually, ultimately, there will be a series of bioaccumulation inside the humans because now humans uh, try to eat bigger fish as well as small fish also. So ultimately, the plastic will start entering into human body. So this is just to show you all, uh, these are tiny micro fi my, uh, plastic fibers that have been uh, uh, detected from this fish. And these are the plastic particles that the, uh, this fish has been ingested. And this is another study done in China. Anyone can go to this uh, DOI number and see, right? So this is done at a lagoon uh, in China. So these are the type of fish that they have. Uh, seen and they have captured and you can see in the intestine, the stomach and the grill, right? So th there are different type of uh, all the concentrations of plastic materials are accumulated in these fish depending on their food pattern. So as you can see, the, now these are the type of uh, uh, plastic materials that they have discovered, the fragments and the films, films probably from the food wrappings. Right? Uh, and the fibers from your uh, whatever the synthetic clothes. So now these are uh, on one pathway that will enter. So one person can tell, okay, I, I will not eat fish, but I'm going to eat only chicken or beef or pork or whatever. So now these plastic particles are there everywhere, not only entering into the marine environment. So now these plastic particles will go and deposit on the grass. Right? So these are very tiny ones. Those are go, may will go and deposit on the grass. Right? So the cow will eat the grass and eventually it will enter into their GI tract and into their body. So uh, whatever the material that we eat, these plastic particles are going into our human body. Now, the WHO has released a huge article regarding this drinking water. Right? Our drink, drinking water is contaminated with microplastics, right? So anyone can download this. This is a freely downloadable uh, uh, booklet, which, which contains somewhere around 120 pages. So you can get a detailed view 
of this microplastic pollution and how the water is contaminated. So there is another article showing, now, now this article concentrate uh, about the uh, uh, bottled water that has been collected from different, different countries. Now from India, Thailand, China, they have collected bottled water, uh, drinking bottle, drinking water, and each and every sample they have shown there is a high concentration of plastic material. So they haven't done anything for Sri Lanka, but I'm pretty sure the Sri Lankan plastic drinking water bottles are also contaminated. So one person can tell, okay, uh, I'm going to filter 100% uh, my whatever the water that I'm going to produce. And uh, so my water uh, bottles are not contaminated with plastics. So now, even though you filter 100%, you uh, remove all the microplastics, there are plenty of evidence to show the inner layer of that plastic uh, bottle by time to time, it's going to shed off. So whatever the chemicals and plastic particles will try to enter into that uh, drinking bottle because you are not going to drink the uh, water at the same day of the manufacturing. So after one or two months or after some six months, you are going to consume that. So we never know at what, what what is the environment that the bottle was kept? So as you all, most of you all have seen, those bottles are carried um, in open trucks, right? Uh, from Peta to Maradana, from, to, uh, to Bunjiborel, then to Borel, then to Nugegur. The same truck is moving throughout the day. So in the different uh, heat environment of the temperature environments, so th there are different, different chemicals are released. So now, uh, before, the marine disaster, uh, one of the biggest marine disaster in the world happened near Sri Lankan waters in 2021. By 2020 December, University of Peradeniya has uh, produced this uh, paper. This uh, project was funded by National Science Foundation, right? Uh, so if you all can uh, go to this link, you all can find it out. So they have mentioned, irrespective of the brand that you buy, the table salt, or the sea salt, all the uh, sea salt are contaminated with plastic. So it is before this Express Pearl Marine disaster happened, this, this uh, research article has been published, right? So uh, now don't concentrate only about this Ex Express Pearl Marine disaster. Uh, before that also, our Sri Lankan water uh, is contaminated with this microplastics. Now, this particular article says, irrespective of your whatever the brand that you buy, is all are contaminated with plastic. So how much of plastic are we eating? So there is another study showing that air we breathe, right? This is from adults and this is from children. So they have quantified how much of microplastic that we are breathing. So most of the intake is coming from your air, the air breathing. Right? And from the seafood, as I mentioned, the bottled water, the sugar that we take, the tap water, alcohol or the beer that we drink, the salt, and also in the honey, right? In different, different concentrations, these plastic materials are coming into human body. So they have gone into further details regarding what type of plastic material is coming in. So as most of the time, it is microfibers, right? This mo most of the microfibers are coming from your synthetic cloths. So now a lot of people will say, locate may recycle uh, the plastic and develop synthetic cloths. So ultimately what will happen, these synthetic cloths will also produce a huge amount of uh, microplastic into the environment. So, uh, so reduction of the production of this plastic is the main important thing rather than uh, going for uh, the biggest recycling is a good thing, but as you all can see, these microfibers, uh, when we produce uh, most of the uh, parts that have been entered into the human body is these microfibers. So the Newcastle uh, University of Australia, they have mentioned, it is, uh, depending on the uh, part of the world that you are uh, engaged in the pollution, at least five grams of plastic that we are eating per week, right? So depending on 
this is just a rough estimate. So if the plastic uh, pollution is high, uh, this five grams will at least go up to 10. Or if the plastic pollution is less, it will drop down further. So also they have uh, predicted, right? The scientists have predicted by 2025 when the next election comes, right? Uh, in the sea water. So when you catch three metric tons of fish, at least one metric ton will be plastic. So why we are talking uh, this much about this microplastics? These are like magnets because when they are in the environment, these tiny plastic materials, they are very fond of absorbing this nickel or the heavy metals and whatever the carcinogenic materials that are released to the environment by different, different sources. So we never know whatever the plastic material that are entering into our body, how long it has been there uh, in the environment. So there are nickel, there are uh, lead, there are BP, there are uh, different different chemicals that are absorbed into this uh, microplastic as well as this plastic materials when they are manufacturing, they are using different different heavy metals such as mercury, the BPA, right, to gain different different properties, the flexibility, the color, the strength, the heat stability, different different things. So what will happen is now this, some chemicals has been already proven these things can cause cancers, right? Like breast cancer, lung, liver, bladder, and the colon, right? So, so these are some examples of uh, cancers. And now they have shown that there are laboratory studies that they have given plastics just to show and demonstrate these are entering into the human tissues. These are uh, laboratory rats that while they are eating, they have been given uh, some microplastics mixed to their food. So this part is, these two pictures are taken from their gut or the intestine. They have, uh, as you all can see, these red color ones are the blood vessels. So these are uh, targeting and going towards the blood vessels and try to enter into the blood vessels, right? Now, this is from your liver and this is from your kidney. As you all can clearly see, these are the blood vessels in the liver tissue, right? So these um, plastic materials are brought to the liver by this, this blood and those are deposited in different, different areas of the tissues. So now once they are deposited in the tissue, what will happen is now whatever the chemicals that have been absorbed or used during the manufacturing of the plastic will be start releasing to the surrounding tissue and cause uh, genetic uh, changes in these cells which will lead to cancerous as well as non-cancerous diseases. Now, this is the dangerous part. Now, again, they have shown by inhalation of these microplastics uh, can cause uh, uh, some serious damages. Now, they have taken pregnant rats and asked the rats to, uh, given the rats to inhale that. And now after that, they have chopped the fetus. They have taken out the fetus and examined uh, for microplastics. Now, all these tissues are from the fetus uh, tissues, right? Not from the mother rat, it is from the baby rat. So, uh, these uh, tiny dots in the white color dots are the plastic material that have been inhaled by the mother rat. So, it has crossed the placenta and come into the, uh, the baby rat. So, now at this moment, when we are talking also, it is happening in humans also. So, uh, up to that extent, it has been uh, damaging to humans. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about this extra spur. Uh, so as you all can see, uh, the, uh, these, these are the tiny nurdles that we encountered uh, or seen during the past few days uh, from the television media, right? So now whatever the material that have been washed to the beach can be removed like this. But the danger comes whatever the material that is going beneath this water, because now these plastic materials that are pure uh, plastic ones, right? So we consider these are pure ones because those are coming out from the factory as a pure plastic material. But due to this disaster, due, because of this huge heat and everything, there can be some chemical changes happening in this plastic. So I don't think all the plastic materials are floating. So some when the density changes, it will start going in uh, down into the uh, 
bottom of the sea so now this is another uh, oceanographic image just to show how much this uh, damage can cause so now this is the location where we had the mixture swell disaster so now this this is uh, this black dots are the microplastic or the nodal distribution so as you all can see this problem is not only for sri lanka it will go towards the malaysia indonesia or all over the country because of this ocean currents okay so <clears throat> this is just to show you all how much of plastic uh, pollution is around sri lanka so can pay attention to the size of the microplastic right so this is from uh, 0.33 to 1 mm so a uh, huge amount of plastic pollutions are happening around sri lanka right so it is important to remember now this satellite image will also show this red color is the highest concentration so as you all can see the most problem not only to sri lanka to the entire world is the most tiniest part not the bigger part so this is the bigger part more than 200 mm so, so the tiniest concentrations are causing the huge effects so as you all can uh, remember there is a, a great pacific uh, garbage patch uh, which is located between uh, the singapore and uh, america so there there's a huge plastic patch which is difficult to map because because of the ocean currents it's moving like this between singapore and australia america and it is twice the size of the texas that means it's 20, 20 times bigger than sri lanka so there are plenty of evidence to show the sri lankan waters are also contaminated with this microplastic especially the north western area especially the manav so there are already published data that sri lankan water uh, are contaminated even in the gulf south the mathar and the gulf uh, are contaminated with plastics this is just to show the not only plastic floats some plastic materials can even go down to the bottom of the sea so now these plastics will be an emitting source of microplastics and i will uh, come for another disaster that is coming up uh, that uh, antibiotic resistance because of these microplastics right so in 2013 uh, a new word plastosphere uh, plastic sphere uh, came into action because now it says this marine environment right the creatures are try to live around this plastic materials now the problem comes uh on these uh, plastic materials there are microbial activity the bacterial and fungal and the viral activity is going on so this is just to show you all electron microscopic views right that the bacteria and the fungus are colonizing making a biofilms uh, on top of this marine whatever the thrown away plastic disaster may may plastic materials so uh, one such thing is because there are Uh, various potentially pathogenic uh, microorganisms can colonize and it has been already proven uh, this especially this vibrio uh, genus uh, colonizing on top of this uh, plastic material which are highly toxic so there are different different research articles to show what type of uh, bacteria or the fungi are developing on top of this plastic material so Uh, just 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 to show you all this article was published in 2004 in malaysia the in the seafood market they have taken some samples there are potentially pathogenic vibrio species are they are on the uh, seafood so these are the areas that we need to think of or new research should be developing because now whatever the plastic material that have been thrown away these are potentially the vessels that can carry the antibiotic resistance throughout the world so this picture i uh, i took it in 2020 february now pay attention to these letters on these uh, bottles this was taken at kokilai right near to molatiu right so these bottles are never used in sri lanka these are some foreign bottles plastic bottles that have been washed to the sri lankan beach so along these bottles on top of this surface 
there are microorganisms colonizing so these things can spread whatever the antibiotic resistant bacteria or the fungi and uh, the antifungal resistance uh, fungi into different different nations they are going to spread the diseases so these are specially uh, the examples done uh, on the, uh, the right food related marine plastic litter now as you all can see there are a lot of antibiotic has been developed the resistance right so whatever the microorganisms on the food related that means whatever the lunch sheets that we are throwing away or whatever the food packing things that are we throwing away on top of that there are there are colonization of the bacteria and those bacteria has developed resistance for different different chemicals or the antibiotics so in near future we, are, we will soonly will we will run out of antibiotics to give for different different diseases because i am telling it because it will take nearly 500 to 600 years uh, to properly uh, degrade this plastic materials little bit about this air pollution also uh, these plastic uh, materials can be they are in the air uh, that we breathe right as the particulated matter uh the these plastic materials will also be there and the problem is these are electron microscopic views to show these plastic materials are going to get adhere to different different structures that will obstruct their biological uh, functions uh right so at the moment we know only about the tip of the iceberg so there are plenty of things that we need to do we need to take take decisions not from the heart we have to take the decisions from the brain in order to reduce the plastic pollution uh, in the rest of the world so this is just a old saying that uh, reduce reuse and recycling but after that now newly you need to refuse whatever the plastic material if you don't want it from the whatever series you back just refuse it rethink and redesign how to reduce this plastic thank you uh i would like to thank uh, dr sajit for that uh, informative lecture now we'll move on to the next uh, speaker uh, i would like to welcome mr ns gamage the deputy director general of the environmental management and assessment division of the central environmental authority uh, his topic will be saying no to plastics an update on the latest rules and regulations over to you mr gamage Mr. Gamage, Mr. Neeman. Yes, uh, thank you for the introduction. Let me share the screen first. Okay. Uh, good evening, everybody. And at the outset, of course, I would like to uh, thank. SLMA Young Members Forum for inviting the Central Environment Authority to speak on the legal aspect of uh, single-use plastic control and the microplastics in the country. And uh, in my presentation, of course, I will try to uh, share with you the present regulations and legal provisions and uh, implementation aspect of it and also the upcoming new regulations and uh, the issues of the plastic was uh, well explained by dr sajit uh, edri singh in the previous presentation and uh, in this uh, scenario of course uh, the issues in the plastic of course has been i mean comes uh, in the uh, 1950s where the plastic has been introduced to the uh, present world and uh, it has been widely utilized as a packaging material as well as a uh, consumer good coming in from 1950s so far more than uh, several billions of plastics has been produced but uh, i would say that uh, only very few percent of plastics has been well managed say that uh, only 12% has been incinerated and at the same time only 9% of 
the plastic has been recycled. All the other plastic items, of course, has been disposed of in landfill sites or otherwise it has been added to the environment, ultimately to the ocean. And in our country, of course, uh, the, we are being uh, producing nearly 600 to 900 metric tons of plastic waste per day, and of which 160 tons are packaging materials as of the present data available in the Central Environment Authority. And also, we uh, it has been reported that approximately 20 million line sheets and 15, 15 million shopping bags are thrown to the environment daily. And also about the pets, of course, uh, more than 100 tons of pet bottles are daily added to the Sri Lankan environment. And uh, also that uh, Sri Lanka is, I mean, uh, in 2017, 750 million USD for importation of plastic materials. Plastic materials, of course, as you all know, that we are not producing plastics, but we are importing plastic virgin pellets. And we, I mean, convert those pellets into various plastic packaging items as well as plastic uh, consumer goods. So that uh, we are importing several kinds of plastics, HTP, LDP, PVC, PET, things like that. But in the case of this uh, uh, single-use plastic and microplastics, we uh, in general define the single-use plastic as a disposable plastic or otherwise we use that uh, disposable plastic for a very uh, limited time and after that we throw it to the environment. So those are Include those are the items that the grocery bags, food packaging items, bottles, straws, containers, cutleries, things like that, and sometimes the shirt clips even. Plastic uh, depths, uh, depths and sizes, but uh, those that are less than five millimeters in length are called microplastics. Microplastics can generate into waste so that we uh, classify them into primary microplastic as well as the secondary microplastics, which was well explained by Dr. Edri Singer. And uh, if I draw your attention to the world scenario, of course, uh, there are uh, plastic uh, gaias in almost all oceans in the world. The non-plastic plastic bags contain two trillions of plastic pieces. The second largest one is in the Indian Ocean, which contains pieces of plastic. And we also, as a country, contribute a lot to generate plastic waste in the ocean. So, this uh, figure illustrates you that the amount of plastic pollution contributed by various Asian countries. And, but uh, compared to the Western countries, uh, the wasteland practices are being developed. Their plastic pollution is very limited. But in other countries, where the infrastructure facilities for the waste management is uh, comparatively less, there is a huge plastic pollution. And uh, that is uh, so that. Uh, more than 126 countries has already been enacted at least one single regulation to control the plastic pollution. So in parallel to that, uh, Sri Lanka also has uh, up to now developed uh, eight regulations to control the single-use plastics and the microplastics. Basically, the legal provisions are available in the National Environment Act, which was enacted in 1940 by Act Number 47, and which was again amended by Act Number 56 of 1988 and 53 of the year 2000. So that uh, this act of force basically to establish the Central Environment Authority, that is the main purpose of that. And also it has certain provisions to make uh, 
certain uh, provisions with respect to the powers, functions, duties of the authority. And also it contains provision for the protection, management, enhancement of the environment, and also to publish regulation, maintenance and control of the quality of the environment, the prevention, abatement and control of pollution and matters connected here with the incidental here too. So those are the main legal provisions available in the National Environment Act. And in addition, there are some more regulations to control the environment pollution, environment management, and also to uh, protect the environment quality in the country. So this uh, National Environment Act is uh, generally, uh, I mean, uh, called as, a, um, as an umbrella act and all the, there are so many other environment related acts like forest ordinance, wildlife ordinance, land ordinance, and UD Act, things like that. There are so many uh, acts like acts uh, who are, which are dealing with the subject of environment, but uh, this the National Environment Act is considered as an umbrella act. That is uh, the powers of the NEA is uh, prevailing over the other acts. And uh, about the legal process uh, to control the plastic pollution is available under section 23 W of the National Environmental Act, where it says the minister in charge of environment may be order published in the Gazette notification, prohibit the use of any material for any process industry and prohibit whether any with a by distribution of my brand, name the use, use of any equipment and industrial plant, which will danger the quality of the environment within the areas specified in the order. So that uh, with this legal environment has the power to publish regulations upon certain material process or industry which causes endanger to the quality of the environment. And also the minister may be order published in the require the instruction to regard maintenance or protection of any equipment or industrial product within the area specified in the order. And the third section is any person who controls any provision or fails to comply with any regulation published under, the, under this uh, section is liable to offense punishable under the provisions of this National Environment Act. That is the main provision which is available under the National Environment Act to control the plastic pollution. So with this provision, of course, the minister in charge of the environment, the then minister was the HE, the president, Maitri Palasi Risena, he published six regulations to control the single-use plastic items in the country. So the first one is, uh, was, is that 20, 34, 36, burning, or, burning openly or caused to allow or permit the open burning of refuse or other combustible matters, including plastics. So by that regulation, burning of plastic material was prohibited in the country. So the this uh, regulation was brought because there are uh, in our country, you know that uh, there are nearly 335 local authorities. They are in charge of collecting and disposal of uh, solid waste in the country. And their, their practice is they collect all the refuse from the streets and some other places and they dump it in a certain barren land, sometimes a wetland and sometimes uh, forest land. And ultimately, they, I mean, tend to set fire on those waste dumps so that uh, in order to avoid that, the minister in charge of the environment published this regulation Mainly at, the, at that time, of course, there were severe such fires in the country. There was one in Badulla, there was one in Beirul as well. That was happened due to the malpractices of local authorities. And also, in addition, of course, we have seen certain uh, other places also, general public also, 
uh, set fires to combustible materials, which includes includes the plastics. So that is the reason for the, this regulation. Uh, 2034-37, the use of all forms of polyethylene, polypropylene, polyethylene products, polypropylene products as national cultural or any other event or occasion. By this regulation, use of polythene material for the decorative purposes was prohibited. In we were, we were I mean, evident that uh, we practice to use polythene in various uh, decorative purposes in our ceremonies, sometimes in political rallies, and sometimes we uh, saw those decorations in polythene in funeral season. With the publishing of this regulation, that uh, the use of polythene for decoration purposes was very limited. Now uh, we can say that regula this regulation was very uh, successfully implemented all over the island. But I am not saying that it is hundred percent. But we can see at uh, very rare occasions people are still using. But uh, in the market, I mean available. The next one is uh, twenty four or thirty eight. The manufacture of containers, plates. And polystyrene for in the country use and sale, offer for sale, offer free of charge, exhibition for use of food containers, plates, and spoons, manufactured from expanded polystyrene. That was bad because you under expanded polystyrene in the sense that the what you call this reform. You may have experience that in the in cities. Parcel for again repack with an another uh, box which is manufactured by polystyrene or the what you call this uh, foam. So because of this, of course, uh, it is not a necessary one. It, that also considered as a single-use plastic item. So that uh, food containers now you can see the, that food container in the market. In the country, uh, we had only one factory which is manufacturing this type of uh, boxes and cutleries that was in uh, Kandy. With the publishing the regulation, that uh, factory had to close their operations. So that uh, this regulation also very successfully implemented in the country. The importation of such material even has been prohibited. It was being controlled by Sri Lanka customs in complying with this regulation. And the next one is uh, any uh, those yes those are the uh, six regulation which I explained to you. Yeah and the other regulation is uh, 20 upon 34 20 34 upon 33 the manufacturer sale and offer for sale exhibition or use of polythene for polythene product of 20 micron or below in thickness for the for in the country use sale offer for sale offer free of charge exhibition exhibition or in in, uh, in the country so that uh, in this uh, by by this regulation of course it has been prohibited manufacture exhibition or sale of uh, any polythene product which is less than 20 micron in thickness. So with this of course polythene recycling was further encouraged. So that if it is less than 20 micron of course you can use only once you cannot reuse it. So that uh, now in the market of course this uh, polythene products which is less than 20 micron thickness is not very rarely available. I am not saying that is fully Control, but it is uh, very limited. And the next one is uh, 2034 upon 34. The manufacture of food wrappers from polyethylene as a raw material for in country use and the sale of a for sale of a free of charge exhibition or use of food wrappers manufactured from polyethylene as a raw material in the country. So, the lunch sheet 
the lion sheep manufacture out of polyethylene has been prohibited by this regulation. We have been practicing that uh, use of uh, polyethylene lion sheet uh, for several years and uh, even in restaurants and eating houses and sometimes in our day-to-day -day functions at the household level even we were using food wrappers. That is to maintain the hygiene quality of the uh, food that we are consuming. So that now you can understand whether it is uh, safe to use food wrappers for wrapping your food items. So Dr. Sajit Edir Singh will explain the danger of these microplastics. And if you are using food wrappers to wrap your food items, you are exposed to microplastics and some other harmful chemicals. So that is the main reason for uh, prohibiting these uh, food, polythene food wrappers in the country. <clears throat> but as an alternative for the polythene food wrappers, biodegradable food wrappers have been introduced to the market, which is available, which is being degraded for a uh, period of uh, 30 days so that uh, it's available in the market and it has been manufactured out of uh, certain flows like uh, manioc and uh, wheat flows, things like that, and sometimes the sweet potato flows. So that is uh, the virgin mat virgin pellets materials are imported to the country of this of those biodegradable materials and the same machineries could be utilized for manufacturing of food wrappers uh, by using those biodegradable virgin pellets so that manufacturers are not re required to change their machineries but they can use the same machineries for production of biodegradable food wrappers by using those uh, biodegradable virgin Plus virgin uh, bio materials. Uh, in general, our country we are using uh, two types of such uh, biodegradable plastic materials. One is polylactic acid, and there's another one. And those two plus biodegradable plastic materials are available in the country, and uh, the products manufactured out of it is also available. But still, we can see some uh, illegal traders, illegal manufacturers are manufacturing uh, food wrappers. And the next regulation is uh, 2034 upon 35, the manufacture of any bag of high density polyethylene as a raw material for in-country use and sale, offer for sale, offer for free of charge, especially no use any Bag manufactured from high density polythene as a raw material within the country has been prohibited. So that uh, now, what, is, uh, what you get from the supermarkets has to be, I mean, uh, manufactured at least low density polyethylene. We have prohibited is a high density HDPE. HDPE and uh, bags manufactured out of HDP polythene has already been prohibited by this regulation. In the market, what is available is the low density polyethylene bags. The difference between the high density polyethylene and the low density polyethylene is the not the molecular difference uh, formula is same, but their density molecular compaction is a little bit uh, different and the, their density is quite different. But uh, I would say that the, this regulation, of course, has to be reviewed again because the impact in the environment because of the high density polyethylene as well as the low density polyethylene are very same. But to start a uh, certain kind of uh, uh, prohibition, the Ministry of the Environment decided to uh, first go for as a first step to prohibit the high density polyethylene bags. And those are the six regulations published in the country in the year 2017 by the 
Minister of Environment, the AG, then the Maitri Pana Sirisena. And uh, in the present year, 2021, another two regulations were published by the Central Environment Authority under the provisions of the National Environment Act. This is such uh, this regulation of uh, we can say plastic material identification standard regulation. Thereby, the all the plastic items, packaging material, or whatever the consumable item has to be marked clearly in accordance with the plastic material identification standard. You know that there are certain international standards for material identification, and those standards should be followed by law. The main reason for this regulation is that what's available in the market, all the plastic materials, or the plastic items, or the plastic packing materials are, cannot be identified by their type of uh, manufactured plastic. So that uh, recycling of plastic, plastic has been uh, in a very uh, big mess because they cannot identify the plastic material by which that uh, particular product has been manufactured because you know that uh, plastic uh, materials are quite different so that uh, plastic cannot be recycled uh, with uh, if, if it comes in a mixture so that uh, plastic material has to be separated out by their type and then only you can uh, recycle it and manufacture secondary plastic pellet out of that recycled plastics so that, uh, you can Recycle HDP plastic with the LDP plastics, or otherwise you cannot uh, recycle HDP plastic with the PVC. You have to separate it out and you have to recycle it separately. So that is the main reason for, I mean, uh, publishing this kind of a regulation in the country under the National Environment Act. There are so many plastic recycling industries in the country. Some of them are, uh, I mean, uh, very uh, big companies, some of them are very local level companies. But uh, to uh, make the plastic recycling process for the facilitate, this regulation was published. These are the plastic identification international standards. You know, there are several uh, kind of plastics, polyethylene terephthalate, abbreviation is uh, PET. There is a plastic item which we are using for manufacture of uh, bottles, the drinking water bottles, sorting bottles, things like that. And this is the symbol. They will have to, I mean, uh, use one of the symbols out of these three in their plastic packaging material or any other plastic uh, material that they are producing. And the next one is high density polyethylene, HDPE. That is a uh, symbol is number two. They will have to, I mean, emboss either one of these uh, three stand, stand, identification stand. So likewise, for the polyvinyl chloride, low density polyethylene, polypropylene, and polystyrene, and other plastic materials also, there are uh, international standards those have to be adhered by the manufacturers. And the next regulation which was published in the uh, year 2021 is that prohibition of uh, using uh, polythene terephthalate or the PET or polyvinyl chloride or the PVC material for packaging or agrochemicals used for any process trade or industry. The because that the once you uh, use polyethylene or peto polyvinyl chloride for packing of uh, agrochemicals. That empty container cannot be recycled excuse in the me, country. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Nimagami. Yeah. Uh, sorry for disturbing you. Uh, but yeah. the uh, sound is breaking up from time to time. I think uh, since you're wearing an earphone, you're wearing an earphone, right? Ah, okay. Right. Yeah, I'm uh, wearing no, earphone. Yes. That's okay. Uh, but I think the input is getting dis disturbed when you're moving the mouse. I think that's the issue. Uh, oh, I'll manage it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And the, uh, the polyethylene, polyethylene terephthalate, or the polyvinyl chloride material for packing agrochemicals used uh, for any process. 
that the main reason for that is uh, once you utilize for the I mean, uh, utilize for recycling in the country because that facility is not available in the country. And now the regional pesticide agreed to, I mean, with this regulation and all the uh, agrochemical companies are also being agreed with this uh, regulation. And now they have gone, go for, gone for some other packing materials. I guess that the sound is okay. Yeah. Sometimes there are some uh, breakups. It's okay. Yeah, uh, that's okay. Uh, and, and the other one is the any plastic item is specified in for any processes, trade or industry. That is the sachets. So, for reason for, I mean, uh, prohibiting observe that so many sachet packets in uh, masses in the country so that uh, people are using sachet packet for uh, having baths in a uh, water mass especially in the our irrigation tanks and some other rivers and uh, other waterfalls where we have seen huge amount of plastic sachet packets in the environment in such environment so that uh, because of that of course we uh, compared which is less than 20 milliliters in volume or 20 grams in size. It has been allowed for packing of uh, food and medicines. And the next one is uh, inflatable toys. And uh, of course, I must say that the session packets cannot be recycled even or reused. And the next one is inflatable toys, except the balloon, ball, balloons, balls, and water floating. Uh, full toys and yes, all the other inflatable toys were prohibited. Most of the inflatable toys are not manufactured in the country, but we are importing from some other countries. And uh, those uh, inflatable toys even can be used only uh, for a very limited time. And after that, it goes into the waste stream. It will it will accumulate in the our uh, aquatic environment as well as in some other. Uh, environments. So that is the main reason for prohibiting that inflatable toys. And the last one is the cotton buds with the plastic stems. It's a plastic cotton buds used for medical or chemical treatments. So this uh, plastic uh, stem of course it has been uh, recorded that various environmental consequences had happened because that cotton bars so considered as a single-use plastic item, so that uh, we have uh, taken action by this regulation to prohibit cotton buds even. Now in the market, uh, there are cotton buds with the wooden uh, stems. Uh, you can buy uh, cotton buds with wooden stems in certain places, but it is not widely available in the country yet. Those are the uh, eight regulations which was published under the National Environment Act in the year 2017 and 2021. And the, all, and the punishments available under the National Environment Act contains uh, under section 31 of the National Environment Act, where it says that every person who contravene or fail to comply with any provision of the Act or any regulation made there under for which for shall be guilty of an offence and on conviction before magistrate shall be liable to imprisonment of uh, either description of a term of exceeding two years or a fine not exceeding 10,000 rupees or both such imprisonment and fine. Those are the fines which is actually I must say that this fine is not adequate 10,000 rupees is uh, just nothing for a, a large scale manufacturing company or a wholesale trader of those materials. But uh, this uh, that is a provision which is available in the National Environment Act. Definitely, this has to be further reviewed. And then uh, awareness programs were conducted by the Central Environment Authority and various forums to uh, I make aware the 
general public on those regulations. And the regulations are implemented uh, island-wide by ready programs conducted by the Central Environmental Authority. During last three years, we conducted radium program, but this year we had to, I mean, limit the radium program due to this COVID pandemic. And these uh, radium programs are conducted uh, covering manufacturers, traders, and the uh, retail users as well. And rates are conducted jointly with the Consumer Affairs Authority and the Sri Lanka Police. And all the illegal products are seized under the provisions of the Consumer Affairs Authority Act and seized materials are being produced through the respective courts and with the court permission, seized materials are destroyed in a landfill site operated by the Central Environment Authority. The accused was penalized, penalized twice. The, there will be two uh, cases, again, the same accused. One case will be filed by the Consumer Affairs Authority Act by the Consumer Affairs Authority, and another case will be fi filed by the Central Environment Authority under the National Environment Act. The same person will be, I mean, uh, convicted for two offenses by those uh, two acts. And also there are uh, production stocks also will be seized and it will be destroyed with the court permissions. And these are some uh, figures on rates conducted during last three years. And uh, all the provinces were covered. And all together now we have conducted uh, nearly 24,000 rates all over the island. And we have detected 2,600 uh, 2, violations uh, all over the country. And all the persons were penalized. And in addition to uh, this uh, law enforcement, the Central Environment Authority, uh, facilitating waste uh, management all over the country. We have been, uh, I mean, uh, handed over waste recycling facilities to various uh, local authorities and to uh, private sector agencies as well. And those are available in certain uh, local authority areas like uh, Orana, Morotua, Aduela, Jaffna, Balanguda, Badulla, Anuradhapura. Those research centers are, I mean, uh, res I mean, operated by the local authorities and the private sector companies. And also, uh, the Central Environment Authority has uh, established a base pyrolysis plant in the Gamba area. Yeah, it is also being operated uh, successfully. And also, we are promoting waste re recyclers and uh, the recyclers are being uh, promoted, assisted by the Central Environment Authority. And also, you know that uh, very recently, a private sector company installed a waste to energy plant in Muthurajabela, where they are manufacturing 100 megawatts per day out of uh, nearly 600 metric tons of uh, solid waste. All the plastic materials are being uh, incinerated and energy is manufactured and that manufactured energy is connected to the national grid of the Ceylon Electricity Board. And in addition, the Central Environment Authority established a sanitary landfill site in uh, Gampa, where we, you can dump six metric tons per day. And in addition, there's another sanitary landfill site developed by the Ministry of Megapolis for disposal of solid waste in Arvakalu in Putlam, where all the non-biological uh, non materials can be disposed in that uh, Arvakalu and Dompe Sentry landfill sites. Those are the few initiatives that uh, Central Environment Authority has already taken to control the single use plastic menace in the country. And uh, about the penalties, of course, uh, I would say that the present penalties are not adequate to uh, control this plastic. Uh, and the single-use plastics minus in the country, but the, we have proposed uh, increasing increased fines. That the first-time fine will be not exceeding hundred thousand rupees, and for the same person who is continuing the offence, will be fined two hundred thousand rupees for this if he if it is uh, found that he is continuing the 
same uh, offense after the first uh, penalizing. And also we can uh, we will be able to closer get a closer order of that particular activity. Either it may be a sometimes a factory, sometimes a trade. And also make it a cognizable offense. Cognizable in the sense we uh, under the present uh, legal provision we cannot uh, I mean arrest people, but uh, with the new uh, proposed provisions we will be able to arrest the people even the accused. And also we are going to introduce, introduce the extended producer responsibility principle to manage the plastic waste in the country. Extended producer responsibility in the sense that the producer is responsible for collecting back their waste material from the market once the consumer is consuming and he has to uh, collect and recycle or reuse or he has to dispose it in an environment safe manner. That is what we call the extended producer responsibility. So now the Central Environment Authority is taking actions to uh, bring new legal provisions to the National Environment Act to further strengthen the, strengthen the plastic waste uh, controlling provisions. And also I must say that there is a, uh, a certain kind of uh, a barrier in our legal uh, sector that is the direction number 26 which was published under the consumer affairs authority where it says that that uh, all traders that no, no traders that no trader, trader shall at time of selling of goods levy any charge on consumers for any bag or wrapper issued to the customer so this is the main reason that all the uh, supermarkets and some other uh, boutiques are giving free of charge plastic bags to their customers to carry their consumer goods. So this is a, a legal requirement that all the traders have to issue a free bag to their customers when they buy goods from their outlets. So, but here it is uh, not indicated that the uh, traders are required to give the give a plastic bag so that any kind of a bag has to be given to the consumers by the traders by this law that was published in the year 2008 after a supreme court uh, case filed by uh, by a person saying that his fundamental rights has right has been violated since not issuing a bag to him by a certain uh, com retail outlet so this is uh, one of the uh, i mean a barrier for us to control the plastic waste menace in the country but uh, the central environment authority consulted the attorney general department and now we are going to uh, uh, introduce uh, some sort of new regulation where plastic bags will be uh, banned that is uh, the size between 400 to 500 millimeter in size within the uh, width. And uh, there will be uh, certain legal provisions to ban plastic cutlery, plastic stoves and styrers, plastic uh, grass carpets, uh, plastic uh, inner incense and soaps, personal care products and containing microbeads, and plastic and these are the uh, new upcoming new regulations under the National Environment Act. And uh, with this uh, regulation of force, uh, we hope that uh, we will be able to control uh, the single-use plastic items in the country up to a certain extent. But uh, we are not uh, stopping publishing regulations uh, with the with all this uh, regulation, but. Uh, uh, we are in. A, we have identified a series of such single-use plastic items, which will be banned in near future under the provisions of the National Environment Act. Those are things I will have to share with you on the legal aspect of plastic uh, waste management as well as single-use plastic control and microplastic controls. So I thank you all, and also I must uh, thank at last the SLMA for inviting the Central Environment Authority.
to share the views on the uh, legal aspect of plastic waste management. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Nimal Jamagi, for enlightening us on uh, the rules and regulations regarding plastics. Uh, so shall we uh, move on to the uh, question and answer session? Uh, so yes. uh, there is an interesting question here uh, in the chat. Uh, Ahmed Iqbal has asked, any microfiber or plastic in the face mask that we are using now? Uh, Sajid, can you? Yeah, answer? yeah. Yes, uh, now there are research work coming up that uh, microfibers are entering into our respiratory tract or the lungs uh, by these uh, proper, um, uh, not wearing properly standardized masks. So there are plenty of uh, duplicates in the market say, uh, with the same uh, appearance and the same uh, 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 the, they are telling that the same, it's in the same quality because it's very difficult to differentiate and find out what is the original one and what is the duplicate one. So there are a lot of research papers uh, have been published. Uh, in, uh, there are inhalation of microfibers by this uh, uh, wearing of this, uh, not properly uh, standardized uh, duplicate uh, mask. And the other interesting thing is, now, once we wear the mask, we need to dispose it very uh, clearly and proper you know, in a proper manner because there are a lot of research work has been come out. These uh, uh, mismanaged uh, masks uh, will lead to spread out, lot, uh, emit a lot of microplastics as well as it will help to spread the coronavirus up to 100 kilometers from the particular uh, place. So one study was that uh, France, I think. So they have uh, shown that uh, that virus can spread through these microplastics, the airborne microplastics, st still they are under research level. It has not been uh, a fact up to now. It has, still it is under research level. Uh, it, it will spread down up to 100 kilometers from the source if it is not properly uh, disposed. Um, so there, is there a way to uh, recycle these masks since uh, it can be considered as hazardous materials? Yeah, or... now the pro problem is these masks are considered as biohazard materials. So there are different guidelines to dispose and uh, remove these biohazard materials because we can't uh, recycle and uh, uh, who may make some other materials or reuse most of the ma face mask, right? So there are a few face masks uh, that can be washed and uh, reused by the same person. Not We can't wash and give it to another person to wear that. The, the, if you are washing that, you need to wear it by yourself, not uh, by giving to anybody else. So these biohazard materials, yes, there are different regulations by the Ministry of Health, how to dispose them. Mm. So, uh, thank you for that answer. Uh, so, we will next uh, to the next question. Uh, Sukaj Pereira is asking whether uh, haven't the big soft drink industry, Coca-Cola, Pepsi-Cola, etc., consider any interventions to minimize plastic use global level? Uh, I think uh, Mr. Gamagi uh, also can uh, give a particular answer for that. And also now this uh, in different places you all must have seen that uh, the coca-cola and uh, there is another private uh, company called eco spindle uh, uh, because there are other companies also that i'm telling from my personal experience from faculty of medicine university of sri jawadhanapura because we have been given two bins uh, by uh, those uh, companies because they uh, we are asked to put all these pit bottles so far, we have uh, sent nearly 100 kilograms of PET bottles for recycling. So there are uh, coming up uh, uh, new interventions, but uh, the problem is these companies, these plastic recycling companies, they are also not running up to their 100% uh, capacity from, uh, because uh, as uh, Mr. Gamage uh, mentioned very clearly, there are tons and tons of PET bottles have been re uh, released to the environment daily 
but they are not been uh, properly sent for recycling because now uh, usual capacity for an example uh, this is a few years back now the usual capacity if it is uh, the pet recycling capacity is 12 uh, lakhs of kilograms of pet bottles per day in a uh, if, if it is running in the full capacity but usually they will get only 3 or 4 lakhs of pl pet plastic bottles per day so they 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 will also are un may under utilizing their facilities because the 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 supply of the waste plastic material is not reaching the recycling units properly so that is uh, a good example so all of us have to make sure that all these plastic bottles that we uh, use or seen uh, should be sent ultimately uh, for the recycling because there are plenty of factories there are uh, mr gamage will tell there there's a huge list in the cea website uh, there are plenty of people who like to recycle mr gamage uh, yeah thank you doctor and uh, to add uh, several points to uh, that uh, question in the year 2015 the eco spindle company that is one of the biggest company who Uh, which many i mean recycle the pet bottles recycle 585 metric tons of plastics now they are going to increase their capacity uh, they have planned to increase their uh, capacity to uh, up to 3600 by 2022 so that uh, eco spindle is located in uh, somewhere in horana in kalutura district they are collecting all the pet bottles then uh, and uh, manufactured uh, certain uh, items like uh, garments uh, shoes uh, shoe laces things like that and you know that uh, they were uh, they donated uh, certain plastic uh, uniforms to the sri lanka cricket team even and uh, that is uh, there is a biggest uh, recycling company in our country so they are they are expanding their manufacturing i mean recycling capacity so that almost uh, certain other cap other companies even the i can remember the uh, certain uh, drinking water bottle companies and some other uh, companies are uh, signing agreements with the eco eco spindle company to collect their empty plastic pet bottle pet bottles from the market so that uh, uh, there's uh, and in addition there's another company in uh, horana area even uh they are collecting pet bottles and export to india so those are the two major companies who are dealing with uh, plastic uh, pet bottle recycling uh, industry and i must say that uh, even those two companies cannot collect can recycle all the pet bottles generated right now in the country but we need to expand this recycling process and uh, certain in initiatives are there by uh, certain companies multinationals like coca cola pepsi cola and uh, some other companies but it is not adequate to collect all the plastic bottles they are releasing into the environment but the basic thing is those initiatives are voluntary not uh, uh, not covered by any law that is uh, why the central environment authority is uh, taking action to introduce a new law that is the extended producer responsibility where all the producers are responsible by law to collect their uh, waste materials or the plastic materials from the environment after consumption by their customers and reuse or recycle them so uh, that once that uh, legal provision was uh, added to the national environment act we can publish the regulations and uh, we can enforce them and there by you can see in some other countries uh, you can uh, i mean once you put a plastic bottle into a machine you can get some incentives like coins and, and some other uh, cinematic things like that such systems could be i mean uh, further promoted by establishing uh, that particular extended producer responsibility law in the country thank you that's very encouraging to hear thank you mr niman Uh, there's a raised hand, raised hand uh, Mr. Arya. Yes, uh, you can ask Thank a question. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much indeed. And uh, may I thank the two speakers 
excellent and illuminating presentations. Uh, perhaps this question could be dealt with by uh, Nimal. Uh, you, I think you mentioned about burning the plastics as a way of disposal. I thought it is environmentally toxic. Uh, can you correct me if I'm wrong? Yeah, uh, I must say that uh, I did not use the word burning. I said incineration. Right. Incineration in the sense that the is a process of dual burning, right? The once you burn the plastic material, yeah, it definitely generate toxic fumes like uh, persistent organic chemicals, namely uh, furan and dioxins and hydrochloride and some other heavy metals even if it is available in that particular plastic material. But in the process of uh, incineration, the burning will take place at a, a high temperature, sometimes uh, about, uh, yes, about 1000. And at that temperature, of course, all the uh, materials will be burned out and the, the gases coming out of that burning process will again burn out in a secondary burning chamber. And then that after the, uh, after the secondary burning, the fumes coming out of the, that secondary burning chamber will further process and will further clean up to remove the uh, persistent organic chemicals like dioxin furan, hydrochloric acids, and some other toxic metals, which sometimes may contain in that uh, plastic material. So that is available in, the, in our country even. So very recently, one company established that their plant in Kerala here. If you are interested, you may go there. That the na name of that company is Colombo Waste to Energy Private Limited. They commenced their operation very recently, and all the waste materials uh, generated in the Western province are collected through the uh, Waste Management Authority of uh, Western Provincial Council, and uh, their waste materials are burning in their incinerator. We have okay. tested, yeah, we have tested the outlet there. Uh, is quite, uh, I mean, in line with the ambient, uh, the emission standards published under the National Environmental Act. Thank you very much. Uh, you have made it clear. And could I just uh, ask a supplementary question about enforcement? Uh, you did mention about the regulations. How effective is the current uh, enforcement? Uh, I ask this question because when I speak to people who dump their plastics on the roadside, they say they haven't got the facilities to dispose them. Yeah, correct. Uh, good question. And earlier, of course, the problem, problem was the once the local authorities collected the plastic or whatever the refuse from the household or some other institutions, they did not have a proper ultimate disposal site. Now for the Western province, they have a disposal site that is the waste incineration plant by which they produce energy by burning waste material. So now that, that particular waste incineration plant, the Kalam Waste Private Limited, requires more than 600 tons of uh, waste to burn per day and to produce 10 megawatt to, I mean, uh, supply to the electricity, electricity board, board. But right now, uh, I, I visited that plant recently and the GM informed me that they are not getting enough waste to meet their demand daily. So that uh, they are, I mean, collecting some other waste which was uh, accumulated for several years in Muthuraja Villa. Muthuraja, they are a waste dump and they are collecting waste if the daily collection is not meeting the daily demand. Thank you very much. But I'm not saying that uh, you cannot see any waste material in the road, uh, even if those uh, facilities are available, but the problem is with the waste management by the local authority. You know that local authorities are very politically driven bodies. Their interests, of course, depend on the uh, person who is, uh, I mean, charging that body. If they are interested, of course, all the facilities are available in the country now. Okay, thank you, Mr. Nimal. 
Uh, there's a little suggestion by Munaz Farzan. They suggest and execute necessary immediate actions to make and use paper bags, cloth bags in all the shops and malls. Yes, that's a good suggestion, very good suggestion. Uh, so um, then there's another question by uh, Pratu. What can we do if we see these prohibited items are still being used? Will people doing them be punished? Uh, a part of this question is answered in uh, Mr. Nima's uh, talk. Uh, but what can we do if we see these uh, prohibited items are still being used? Sajid, Mr. Nima? Yeah, Mr. Nima can answer it. Probably. Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, the, about the paperback, of course, uh, we can see that in certain certain companies has, uh, have initiated uh, using paper bags. But uh, I cannot say that um, almost all the companies are using paper bags, but uh, those are voluntary initiatives, but it is, it is not happening in all over the island. Uh, but the uh, uh, biggest issue is about the polythene bag issued by the, uh, these uh, food cities. Uh, per year, we are using uh, more than 20 million such uh, shopping bags per day, but uh, we have to address that issue because that uh, I, I in in my presentation I said that the, we have prohibited only HDPE shopping bags. Still, LDP shopping bags are not prohibited. So the what is uh, currently available in the uh, market is LDPE shopping bag. Uh, but the, our next step in my last uh, slide I uh, mentioned that we are going to prohibit uh, 400 into 500 size uh, plastic bags so that uh, with that regulation of course we can say that uh, the people will tend to move into the some other alternative materials like uh, paper bags but without the law of course uh, we cannot see uh, any change in the country we need to i mean enforce the law and uh, that is the answer for the first part of the question. Last uh, part of course, I was not very clear. I didn't hear that. Uh, they asked clear. about uh, the, any punishments. So um, the in uh, the, uh, the all the laws are there, but uh, who may what, what can we do uh, when they break the law? As citizens, what what we can what can we do if we see somebody breaking these rules? You mean as a citizens? Yes. Uh, if the citizens, uh, the law is implemented by the Central Environment Authority under the National Environment Act. Nobody, no others can I mean, implement that law. But the, the CA is, uh, I mean, uh, conducting raids all over the island. We have a network of our officers in each uh, province. We have office and also in each district we have office. And we have a very uh, good team of officers who can who have been well trained for conducting this kind of uh, uh, raids in uh, coordination with the Consumer Affairs Authority and the Sri Lanka police. So that uh, if there's any uh, illegal or prohibited material is uh, being used by any person, you can inform our uh, officers nearest uh, CA office and they can uh, they will conduct the raid. And here I must say that the we are uh, mainly our main focus is manufacturers and the wholesale traders. Most of the manufacturers are I mean uh, locating their industries within the Western province, but certain industries are there some other places outside the Western province. Wholesale market is available in Peta People's Park. People's Park is a place where all the manufacturers bring their production stuff and uh, distribute it all over the island. So that our main focus is that uh, wholesale market as well as the manufacturers. So far, we have raided uh, more than uh, 60 such large-scale manufacturers and we have uh, seized uh, more than 100 metric tons of such uh, illegal lunch sheets from the manufacturers and the wholesale traders. They are actually, they are very uh, smart now. They have, I mean, used to our rates even. They, I mean, avoid the 
manufacturing and the trades uh, they do it uh, sometimes in the nights and the weekends but uh, initially when we i mean uh, start the ready processes we were able to i mean uh, seize all the materials from the wholesale traders as well as from the uh, manufacturers during the day time but uh, after some time uh, we were not able to i mean uh, conduct uh, successful trades because they avoided that uh, those uh, office working hours and they i mean uh, shifted their production times and the selling time out of that uh, working hours so that uh, we had to conduct uh, extend our raiding program even sometimes uh, to the weekends as well as to the night time as well it was very very uh, tedious process and also uh, we have to i mean uh, bring all the seas materials to kampa where our central land fish site is available it needs uh, heavy resources as well but uh, anyhow we are doing well to i mean seize the production stocks and sometimes we can see that the seas uh, due to low penalty that is just uh, 10000 rupees uh, even for a large scale manufacturer uh, they are continuing the offense even after penalizing but the biggest loss is not the penalty but the biggest loss is that their production loss once we uh, i mean uh, uh, seize their product sometimes we can uh, we were able to seize uh, product uh, their products of sometimes uh, 12 metric tons from 1 metric ton to 12 metric tons from the manufacturers one ton one metric ton in the say sometimes uh, nearly 2 uh, 3 lakhs 12 metric tons in the sense several millions so they are losing such a, a big amount of money that they have spent for manufacturing of such a, uh, uh, such a production stock so that is the biggest uh, loss they are i mean uh, facing and uh, they are the fine so that anyway now we have already under, understood that the fine is uh, not adequate so that is why we are going to amend the national environment act to add uh, some more stringent fines like 100000 rupees for the first time and uh, 200000 rupees for the second time and also to uh, arrest the people and also to seize the i mean the, the stop operation of that uh, illegal uh, manufacturing company or the illegal trade thank you thank you very much asmima uh, dr sankar ramdani kumar says uh, it's better to guide Uh, to find an alternative to food sachets as well is regarding the sachets uh, sources commonly serve with food in sachets and found in large numbers in the environment ah uh, yeah of course uh, the we have uh, i mean conducted a study before we i mean bring the regulations and uh, we found that uh, 72% of the uh, small uh, sachets are belongs to uh, non food items food item consists a very less amount but the uh, non food items are packed in such as uh, the percentage is uh, nearly 72% so that is why we went for the uh, non food items of uh, such a packets and uh, in the market of course uh, the such as in uh, such a packets uh, are very limited so after publishing the regulation we uh, granted several uh, months few months grace period to comply with the regulations and the biggest uh, sachet manufacturers are liver brothers and uh, some other multinational companies and those uh, companies uh, were not very happy with the central environment authority and uh, there were various arguments with us and also with the secretary of the ministry and uh, we i mean uh, did not uh, able to uh, give any uh, chances and uh, they were had they had to i mean remove certain packets from the market but ultimately what they did was uh, they uh, produce a sachet which is having four compartments four compartment each each compartment is uh, 8 ml in size 18 into uh, 4 in the sense that uh, 32 ml that is what we have done in uh, some other countries but uh, 
is in accordance with the law, but the government did not uh, agree with that uh, marketing strategy, and they had uh, to stop that even. It's very hard to, I mean, implement the law in a country like us. Most of the companies are trying to uh, uh, find loopholes in the regulations or the laws and uh, try to escape. Uh, all are not uh, bothered about the environment as well as the uh, human health aspect of the innocent people of the country. Just uh, more, almost all the companies are, I mean, uh, hunting for the money. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lima. Uh, there are two questions. I combine them uh, by um, Sujata Patra again, Hugh Where segregation is not in place in most areas, so plastics in household goes out as general waste. Does this go to environmental friendly dispos dis disposal? That's one. And then uh, in the Colombo municipality, plastic waste is collected separately. Is it being recycled? So uh, waste management in ho household. Yes, uh, now the for the easiness of recycling of plastic waste, it is required to separate it up from other uh, biodegradable waste. So that uh, now uh, in the country, you can uh, see that uh, there are so many waste recyclers who are, I mean, uh, collecting recycler material from uh, going uh, by going door to door. So the, in weekends, even I have been experiencing that uh, people are coming to collect uh, plastic waste material uh, from house to house. Those uh, informal sector is also being uh, performing very well. And in addition, of course, uh, the plastic waste and some other non biological waste has to be definitely recycled. I mean, recycled, and it has to be, I mean, separated out from the other biodegradable waste materials. But uh, within Colombo area, of course, Colombo and some other uh, local other areas, all the waste materials are being sent to the sent to that uh, waste to energy plan which was very recently commenced its operation in uh, Kerala Pitiya. And uh, their uh, waste separation is not desired for that uh, waste to energy plan. All the waste in a mixed manner even can be and uh, it could be converted into energy. So that is why in certain local authorities separate it out, but I say that uh, definitely in other areas of course, waste has to be separated out and the combustible material and the other material also has to be separated out. And the biodegradable material would be, I mean, uh, composted by uh, composting plant, which they already have. So that is, uh, but of course, it, uh, the manner that uh, the waste uh, management has to be performed by the local authority. But uh, we know that in certain places, inefficiencies are there. Still, we need to I mean, improve those uh, local authorities' performances. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Nima Gamagi. Uh, since we are running out of time, uh, I would like to hand uh, over to Kaushi uh, to give the word of thanks. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, and uh, first, I would like to thank Dr. Padma Gorakna, the president of the Sri Lanka Medical Association and the council for this great opportunity to discuss these timely topics through SLMA Young Members Forum. And thank you, uh, our two speakers today, Dr. Saji Tedri Singha and Mr. Nima Gamage, for sharing your knowledge on microplastics with us today. And I would like to thank all the members who have joined us online, and special thanks to Dr. Sankar for organizing these lecture series on behalf of the SLMA Young Members Forum. And thank you, everyone, for joining us today, and uh, have a pleasant evening. <laughs>